Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evans, and this is a brief overview of a disease that attacks our guts called inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. It is actually not a single disease, but rather refers primarily to two related but distinct diseases. One is called Crohn's disease, and the other is called ulcerative colitis, or UC. The key differences are firstly the location of the inflammation, and secondly, the extent of the inflammation. Ulcerative colitis only affects the colon or large intestine, while Crohn's disease can affect the entire digestive system, from the mouth to the anus, or as we say, from gum to bum. In ulcerative colitis, inflammation only involves the inner lining, or what we call the mucosa, while in Crohn's disease, inflammation can extend right through the entire thickness of the bowel wall to the outermost layer of the digestive tract. These differences lead to different outcomes and different treatments, which I'll get to later. The major symptoms of UC and Crohn's do, however, overlap. These include stomach pain and a change in bowel habits. Almost always this means more urgent movements. Other symptoms include weight loss, decreased appetite, uh, fever, night sweats, and extreme tiredness. Now these are trademark symptoms, but it's very important to remember that IBD can play out quite differently in different people. The symptoms of IBD can come and go over long periods of time. Now, people may experience periods of severe symptoms, or what we call flare-ups, and also go through periods when they have few or no symptoms at all, what we call remission. IBD can occasionally affect or inflame other parts of your body, such as your eyes, your skin, your liver, your joints. Now, other symptoms can be more specific. For example, because you see only affects the inner lining of the bowel, we tend to see mucus and blood in the stool whereas Crohn's can inflame the whole bowel wall. So there may be blood, but also significant abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Both diseases can lead to growth delay in children. To investigate the cause of your symptoms or, or gauge the extent of your disease, your care team will listen to your story, ask if there is any family history, and then investigate with things like blood tests, stool samples, and then likely examination of your bowel through x-rays, scans, and or scopes uh, to look at the inside of your bowel. IBD is usually diagnosed in young people, say 15 to 25, but it can appear at any time. There is slightly increased risk for those who have a family member with the condition, and IBD is more common in white people and more prevalent among Jewish people of European origin. IBD affects about 1 in 350 people in most nations, but it's more common in northern regions. Here in Canada, we actually have the highest rate in the world with IBD occurring in as many as 1 in 150 persons, which translates to about 230,000 Canadians. We're not exactly sure why Crohn's and UC happens. It appears that some sort of environmental factor in susceptible individuals causes the immune system, the body's defense against infection, to malfunction. The immune system then starts attacking healthy tissue inside the digestive system, leading to the inflammation. Currently, there is no cure for IBD, but many of the treatments that are effective target the immune system. So, medications such as corticosteroids or 5-ASAs, which help reduce inflammation, or immunosuppressants are often used. Medicines called biologics have become a key treatment option for those with moderate to severe inflammatory bowel disease. They work by using specially developed antibodies to selectively block the effects of the molecules that are involved in the inflammation of the gut wall. The idea here is that we can move from beyond just symptom management and heal the mucosal lining, which can lead to remission and prevent relapses. In Crohn's disease, mild attacks result in patches of inflammation in the lining of the intestine with groups of small ulcers, similar to mouth ulcers, that can occur anywhere in the digestive tract. However, in moderate or severe Crohn's disease, these ulcers become much larger and deeper with a lot of surrounding redness. The inflammation can make the intestine become thickened blocking the passage of digested food. In some cases, deep ulcers break through the wall of the intestine, causing infection outside the bowel, what we call an abscess. And this can actually spread to the skin or a nearby part of the body, what we call a fistula. About three out of four patients with Crohn's will require surgery at one point to remove an inflamed section of the digestive system, especially if the inflammation has caused a blockage. Fortunately now, our surgical techniques have become much less invasive than in the past. Surgery is sometimes necessary in UC, but with early treatment, it can often be avoided. Things to think about with the diet are pretty common sense and individualized. There is considerable variation from person to person, so self-awareness about what foods set you off or, or work for you can be very helpful, as is staying hydrated. Self-awareness is also important when it comes to managing stress. 
you have predictability of IBD or, or dealing with symptoms at the same time you're dealing with life's other stressors can be incredibly tricky to navigate. Inflammatory bowel disease can have a profound effect on an individual's life, physically, emotionally, and socially, both at home and at school or in the workplace. Having to go to the washroom more than 10 times a day or, or even talking about your bowels is, uh, you know, I think it's challenging at any age, but perhaps especially as a young person when this disease commonly strikes. It's a disease that often impacts families, not just individuals, and it is a journey that requires no small amount of bravery, problem solving, and optimism. Although there is no cure yet, uh, there are many treatment options available. As one of my patients with IBD said to me, with my ups and downs, it was important for me to remember that things will return to normal. It may be a new normal, but normal just the same. There are some fantastic IBD resources out there to educate, learn, and share with others that are where you are or have already been there. Thanks for listening and take care.